Welcome to Everyday Reviews. Today we are here at the head office of Mitsubishi Canada to give you an exclusive look to what could be the most anticipated vehicle to come out this year. This is the 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV and with the price of gas these days, this plug-in sport utility couldn't come any sooner. This 2023 PHEV is completely different than the previous version. It is based on the same platform as the new Outlander. As a family, we've spent a lot of time in the latest Outlander, almost 10,000 kilometers to be exact. Make sure to check on the Everyday Reviews channel for all of our Outlander adventures, including our long-term test review. I'll leave a link in the video description. You get that real bold dynamic shield in the front. You know, I'm a big fan of it. I think this thing has a lot of style to it. Uh, you have uh, LED headlamps here. You can now get it in a two-tone on the top trim. There are four trims, which we'll get to in a little bit. This is the top GT trim, by the way. Standard, you get 18-inch wheels. If you go up a couple trim levels, you get 20-inch wheels, which this has here. Now, this platform, compared to the old version, it's about an inch longer in length and wheelbase, and it's about three inches wider, too. This is a big, big platform. It's stiffer, it's lighter, and you're going to get more car and people inside as well, which we'll head to in a second. So off to the side here, you'll notice plug-in hybrid EV here. Big, huge badge, can't miss that. Other than the badge and the charge port though, it doesn't really look any different than the gas version, which is a great thing. You have the nice horizontal belt line here. We have the keyless entry. Once again, like the gas version, you have the button on the front. Back doors do not get that button, unfortunately. Open up the charge port, you'll see you get two ports. You have a regular for level two charging and you have the big one for level three charging. The Outlander PHEV, when it first came out, was one of the only ones to actually offer DC fast charging and this one is the same. You can charge this quicker, but you know what? It's actually even not too bad to plug it into the 110 in your house, but if you want something quicker, plug into one of those ports right there. Of course, on the other side, you have your gasoline port, and it does take regular fuel, which is a big bonus. In the rear, exact same styling as the gas version. You have a rear wiper, a roof spoiler, no visible exhaust tips here. You do have the PHEV emblem on the lower right side. Power lift gate here. You also have a hands-free option, a little kick, up it comes. Now here's where it gets good. This new platform is bigger and also affords three rows of seats for the first time in the Outlander PHEV. This is because the new Outlander was designed as a PHEV and not an afterthought. So with the new larger platform, a new moldable fuel tank and proper low placement of the batteries, you get all the goodness of the gas version and now this third row. The seats are a little bit different than the gas version of the 3O, just in how they fold. There is no area for your tonneau cover under the floor anymore that's taken up by the seat, but the folding mechanism is extremely simple. Instead of pull-out headrests, we have a folding headrest here. We pull number two, fold in, hit three, and we just pull, and that's it. Voila, you have extra cargo room if you don't need that third row. To put it back up, we just lift up, very easy. Just take that, pull number two, and that's it. As many of you know, I love plug-in hybrids. I think they're the perfect fit for most people at this time. You get the benefits of an electric vehicle, yet you have no compromise when it comes to charging or range. The Outlander and the PHEV is a big deal when it comes to Mitsubishi and Canadians. Outlander PHEV has become the world's best-selling PHEV SUV in the world. And when we brought it to Canada in 2018, it became the best affordable PHEV SUV here in Canada. And as we launched the 2023 Outlander PHEV, we're confident that we'll bring the latest technology and innovation to more and more Canadians that they'll want to know more about the Mitsubishi brand. 
just like the exterior, this interior is so different compared to the outgoing Outlander PHEV. There are four different trim levels, by the way. There is the base ES, then up from there you go the LE, the SEL, and the GT. And the GT has one sub trim, which is the GT Premium, which we are in right now. So this is the top of the line, and the GT Premium, the Premium gives you the two-tone semi-aniline quilted seats absolutely gorgeous in this trim here um, but you know what this thing is such a premium offering in this class of vehicle i've said it before if you just go up from the base model itself from the es to the le there's so much content that you get in here such as you get the heated uh, leather steering wheel you get the large panoramic roof you get the power lift gate the upgraded nine inch touch screen and best of all you get the 360 camera one of my favorite features of the new outlander is a 360 camera especially with that dedicated camera button just hit that camera button wherever you are and you're going to see your wheels no curb wheels if you have that for sure and you get all that just one up from the base model most manufacturers nowadays they make you get the very top trim to get that 360 camera so thank you so much mitsubishi for allowing the rest of the people that don't need that top of the line model to get the great features like that camera you get tri-zone climate control so the back seat passengers can have their own control as well so no fighting with the kids and the parents i love that all PHEVs come standard with the 12.3 inch digital cockpit. Uh, it's very, very configurable. You can go through your menus there. And I like how you can change it from a regular dial style to like a, a rolling dial as well. This is also equipped with a, a head up display, color head up display there. This one's equipped with a nine inch infotainment touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay, and you get Android Auto on here. And as I mentioned, you get that great 360 camera, one above the base trim here. The GT we're in also gets a premium Bose audio system. We have a dual power seats with memory settings for both, not just the driver, but the passenger gets it as well. I noticed it on the gas version of the Outlander. There is no home link system where you can actually program uh, a button on your mirror to open your garage door. This PHEV does not have that either. It's not a deal breaker. As I said before, there are a lot of garage doors now, like the one I have at home, they're all Wi-Fi and you can basically control them from your phone or even your watch. But one thing they did include on this PHEV, not the gas version, on the top GT trim here, I'm sitting here, there's a button here, and when you press it, you have massaging front seats. Both seats, passenger and driver, gets the massage feature. And it's actually pretty good. In the middle console here, we have wireless charging, a USB type A and a type C, a 12 volt outlet, and you get the shift by wire. Here's one thing that's different between the PHEV and the regular gas version is we have two separate buttons here. One says EV and one has a pedal. That's for like regen or one pedal driving there. And because of the new platform, we have more room in here, lots of shoulder room. It's very, very roomy. Let's talk about roomy, let's check out the back. Since this new platform is larger, we mentioned it's three inches wider as well. A lot more space in the cabin here. Good shoulder room, headroom here. I have, it's kind of like carved out actually where your head is. I have, oh, that's what about four inches or so of headroom here. Uh, lots of leg room, room for my feet. You have Tons of storage, you have seat back pockets on both sides and you have these little pockets on the top, good for putting your cell phone in or tablets or whatever your kids have maybe. Speaking of kids, we have manual sunshades on this particular trim. Automatic up and down power windows all around plus you have heated rear seats back here as well. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different than the gas version, there is a small hump, which there is on the gas version as well, but there is a little plastic panel on here. And I'm thinking that's access maybe for servicing, maybe if you need to do some something with a battery system. Uh, I'm not sure if that's gonna be in the production model. This is a pre-production model that we are testing by the way. So that may or may not be there. It doesn't bother me at all. Like the gas version, you pull that middle section down you have your cup holders here nice armrest plus it creates a pass through if you have longer objects and these seats also slide forward and back love that you have more cargo that you want to carry 
no one in the back seat maybe, or some shorter riders, you can bring it all the way up front or for the maximum comfort, just pull it all the way back. I'm glad to see the 1500 watt inverter feature has been carried over, which is a big bonus, especially with this large battery. You can power everything from your blender to blow dryer or even your fridge in the event of a power outage. This is the perfect tailgater. Since this is a super early pre-production vehicle, we cannot drive this particular unit yet, but we can still show someone else driving it and tell you all about it. All right, let's talk about performance of this PHEV. You got bigger motors, bigger battery, different platform. How does it perform compared to the previous gen? Yeah, so a lot of improvement with the vehicle since the previous generation. Uh, we see larger electric motors. Uh, they're up about approximately 42% uh, versus the previous generation in terms of power output. Uh, the uh, SAWC system has been improved dramatically as well versus uh, previous generation. We've, uh, the active yaw control system has been improved both front to rear now, as well as the battery pack itself. It went from 13.8 to 20 kilowatt uh, hour uh, battery packs, and now we've got uh, about a 45% improvement versus previous generation. Even though you might have heard or seen the EV range of over 80 kilometers online, that's not quite the case here in North America. It's not that we have a different vehicle, it's just that our testing here is based more on real world results and is different than that of Europe and Asia, which often have larger numbers. The official range on this new PHEV is 61 kilometers or 38 miles, which is about 40% more than the outgoing plug-in hybrid. And the bonus of this system, the new one here, is that you guys use like a heat pump system. Right. So it's not going to rely on the gas engine so much for heating and cooling, which means you can stay in EV longer. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, and you know, I've said this on a lot, of the, a lot of other PHEV reviews on other brands too, when they don't have that type of system, it's always reverting back to that gas engine all the time, especially when it's you know, a little bit cold. And so even short trips, you'll use that gas engine even if you're in EV mode and it kind of defeats the purpose of being EV because I, I just love PHEVs like this because they drive like an EV. Right. Plus you get also the bonus of uh, single occupant HOV lane, yeah. you know, on here. It's, it's a big bonus. You get the full rebate in Canada for the federal rebate as well. Right. Um, and um, this thing's got a lot more power. So power mode, let's talk about that. Power mode obviously does, as it says, it's enhancing the power of the vehicle and you see a significant improvement acceleration uh, when using that. So the beautiful thing of having the power mode is that you can use it when you need it and then you can switch into one of the other modes. We have seven different modes that are available in the vehicle. So a lot of flexibility for the driver. So power mode actually will take off about two seconds off the zero to 100 kilometer an hour town. Right. That's right. huge. Yeah, yeah, big improvement, yeah. But your range will dramatically go down a lot faster too. Well, you'll, you'll <laughs> notice a de decrease, definitely. I mean, it all depends on your driving style and the way you're driving the vehicle and, and outside temperature and so on. There's, there's different variables. But again, it's having that flexibility of being able to switch it into power mode if you need it, like if you're needing it for passing on the highway or something or, or merging onto a highway, you've got that where you can have that added, added acceleration. You know, I've said this before, you know, I spent a lot of time in the gas version of the new Outlander. Um, I love all the aspects of it, the new platform. It's such a premium product. Right. I would like a little extra oomph at the startup and this is going to take care of that for sure. Uh, you know, this is, you know, there's no, there's no compromise with this new vehicle. I think it's going to be a huge, huge seller for Mitsubishi. Right, right. And we agree. I think, you know, it's all about the balance with this vehicle. Again, it's giving the best of everything for what, what the consumers are looking for. You get that excellent SAWC control that we've had for so many years in our products. And then you've got the uh, PHV system with our sophisticated twin electric motor system. And then of course, the fact that it's an SUV, you get all the function and practicality and, and cargo carrying capability that uh, you need in this type of vehicle. Not, not to mention that this year we now have the third row seat as well. So added flexibility. So you must be wondering, how much is this going to cost me? Well, I don't have all the pricing, but I can tell you that in the US, the starting price has been announced and it's just under $40,000 
which is very interesting since the Mighty RAV4 Prime starts at just over $40,000 and they both have very similar ranges. However, the Mitsubishi offers more features for the money in my opinion, a longer warranty and an extra row of seats. In Canada, that $40,000 equates probably just over $50,000 which will make this qualify for the federal incentive. The question will be, which one will you be able to get? So when can I get my hands on one of these? So the vehicles will be available this fall. Uh, we expect it sometime later in, in the year, but uh, they will definitely be in the dealerships later this fall. All right, there you have it, everyone. Thank you, Don. Uh, all that information on this new PHEV. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button and that notification so you'll know, because the next time when we do another video on this PHEV, we're gonna be driving it on an, on an extended drive. And one day we're gonna do a family review in the driveway as well. So hope to see you next time. Safe driving.